Hey, Sarah. We got something for Buffalo Trace. Oh, do you think it's the BTAC? We happy? Chad, we happy? <sighs> yeah, we happy. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And we got something in the mail. This is an unboxing, This Chad. is an unboxing. This is the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. 2020. And obviously, since this came to us, you know that we didn't pay for these. The we distillery did, did send this to us. Some people don't like it when that happens because they figure if you get something for free, you automatically can't give your real opinion. We don't agree with that, um, <laughs> but we do like to disclose. But you're entitled to your own opinion. Yes, we do yeah. like to disclose um, when we get something for free. Sure, and we will give you the suggested retail price, the MSRP for these bottles. <laughs> but I can again hear the people out there who aren't going to like that and say, well, I'll never see it for that price. Well, I'm sorry. Laugh, I can laugh. only give you the laugh, MSRP. Laugh, laugh. Yes. Uh, so we're going to do anyway. all five. This will be a little bit longer oh, video than normal, but if you want to hop around to a particular one, there are chapter markers down there, so you can do that. You can but do we're, that. We're going to go in proof, proof order. That's right. We're going to go proof order. So we are going to start with the Sazerac. This is an 18-year-old 90 proof. Ooh, ooh. The previous edition of Sazerac 18-year-old was named Best Rye Whiskey Aged 11 Years and Over by Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible. This 2020 straight rye whiskey release has notable flavors of oak, caramel and dark chocolate with a finish of coffee, black pepper, and cherries. The barrels for this whiskey were filled in the spring of 2002 and it rested on the third floor of Warehouse K. It's bottled at 90 proof. It's not every day that you used to have an 18 year old. Wow, that sounded horrible. Cut that out, please cut that out, please cut that out. No. Oh no. <laughs> Anyway, um, so say you were able to get this at the store for retail, what would you pay? What is the suggested MSRP? The suggested I mean. MSRP is $99. Right, $99, 18 year old rye. I mean, that that checks out right there. That's actually like, hey. It does. Uh, those ABC states where it has to be it MSR. To be? Yes. But of course, lotteries, you know. This, all that. this whole episode should come with the giant asterisk of not available everywhere. We don't know what you're gonna see it for. Super allocated. Do what you will on the secondary. The like. Buffalo Trace Antique Collection is like probably the most sought after vertical, maybe behind, you know, right Pappy, Pappy, which is also Buffalo Trace. This nose is like, Ooh. I mean, is it wrong to say it's intoxicating? Um, <laughs> it's actually pretty gentle and light for well, a ride, but then it's the 90 proof. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm just getting like, um, you know, you said intoxicating. I kind of am on board with that because it's like a boozy dessert. It's yeah. sort of like a, a sweet fruit mm -hmm. type of compote or whatever. Sure, with some, you know, some allspice in there or yeah. something like that. Woohoo! Okay. Nice. All right, let's Let go. us drink now. Ooh, but there, there is that. It's not your typical rye, mm. though. It's got more of a char mm. and the black pepper that they were had in their tasting notes that comes through. It's a little peachy. Back in. Mm. Peachy in a charred way. Ooh, I'm liking the finish. I'm liking how it's, I'm liking the finish more than the palate. It's really balanced. Like me personally, I'm like, but where's the oomph? But this one's not the one with the oomph. Like we literally only go up for 90 proof. <laughs> but man, I tell you what, for 90 proof, Kentucky hug right off the bat. That's, well, that's that rye speaking. Mm but it's still gentle, which I think that they've got a really nice balance between the age mm. and like all of the complex, really probably aggressive flavors that would come with an 18 year old rye. Yeah. Balanced against that proof. I think they really found a sweet spot as far as it being the right levels of those spices, but that mellow easy, this is a really easy sipper. Two sips in, you are getting a building heat, which is nice for a 90 proofer. But you know, it's that rye. I just realized my nickname should be Two Sip Sarah. Cause I always go for the second one before it's you. It's not every day you get to have an 18 year old. Oh my God. Things Sarah says. This almost Ooh. has some honey to it also. 
Yes, it does. For a lot of people, this is more gonna come down to if you see the 2020s in a bar for a reasonable price, reasonable price, should you plop down the money to get it? Sure. Eagle Rare, mm -hmm. 17 year. One of the bottles, uh, actually these first two that we're trying are the two bottles that we have never, never. been able to own. Mm -mm. You do the honors on that one. Oh, right. And can I just say the finish is still going for me Absolutely. from that uh, Sazerac. Pause for crack. I'm so excited. What a good day for me. Ooh. I feel like I'm having a great day. This 101 proof whiskey was distilled in spring of 2002 and aged on the first floor of Warehouse P. The 2019 release of this bourbon was named best of category at the Los Angeles International Spirits Competition. This bourbon has a nose of ripe cherry, vanilla cream, and oak, followed by the taste of caramel and coffee on a long finish of oak, pepper, and fresh herbs. Weird. Yeah. Talk to me. A little bit of cilantro. Cilantro. <laughs> but not like what you get at the grocery store. Like if you buy a plant and keep it outside and it starts to flower, that type, like it's a little bit of a different smell in the background. I, yeah, I can get on board. I'm actually, I'm not pulling a lot out of this. No? To be honest with you. Oh, it's 100% a cilantro plant. Oh, okay, that's cool. But to be honest with you, I don't know if this is jumping out as being 11 points higher than a normal Eagle Rare or seven years older than a normal Eagle Rare. Floral and oaky. Yeah, a little cherry. Okay, huh. I'm well. ready. Oh, there's that oak punching. Yeah. Punching through. <laughs> and this is a big switch because we went from their rye mash bill to their mash bill number one, which is their lowest rye mash bill. Mm, I almost get a little bit of plum mm -hmm. in there with that oak. Mm -hmm. Yes, the oak. I'm kind of waiting for like a leathery tobacco note, but so far mm. it's not really, maybe it's gonna come on on the finish. I mean, it is hot That's what I'm looking finish. for. Mm -hmm. Do you not, do you think so? I, I mean, uh, yeah. I keep going like, <sighs> Which is so strange for 101, but again, I think it's that proof balanced with that that maturity, bringing all of that you know complex, aggressive it, oak. It's a different type of heat than the rye, the, the rye spice of the Sazerac. Oh, okay. Now it's going dark oak on the finish. Mm -hmm. Really like the finish. Yeah, it's Ooh, really good. nice. It goes. And there's the leather. I was I was really it hoping it would be somewhere there. Somewhere in there. It's definitely on the finish. Oh man, I have to save a little bit of this for the end, but I really don't want to. I really just want just to keep... take a small third sip. What'd they say? <laughs> they said uh, cherries. Okay, got the cherries, vanilla cream and oak. Definitely got the oak. Caramel and coffee and a long finish of oak, pepper and fresh herbs. I get the oak and, and I can see the pepper, but for me, the herbal was on the nose mm -hmm. in that like Agreed. cilantro area. Yeah. Just fresh cut herbs. I don't get that in the palette, personally. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. I don't know if I would say exceptional. I don't know if I'm I in love with it. I don't know if I would say exceptional either. I'm, I like the finish. That's my favorite part of it. I really dig it. Yeah, you know, another $100, uh, I would say you were definitely getting your value for a uh, $100, 17 year old, 101 proof, uh, allocated once a year release. Um, say more things. No, I ran out, I ran right out. Now. If you take all that out of the equation and you're just going by how you enjoy it, I'd say it's it's well priced. It's priced right. Agreed. Hmm. Good. I don't know if this is the one though. If I saw all five, <laughs> would this be the one that I would go for? I'm, f I'm feeling, feeling no. no. I'm feeling no. But we'll see. All right. Next up, we have the Thomas H. Handy Sazerac straight rye whiskey, uncut, unfiltered, <gasps> one twenty nine proof. Thomas H. Handy is the uncut and unfiltered straight rye whiskey. Last year's release earned the Chairman's Trophy, scoring 99 points at the Ultimate Spirits Challenge, and was also named the third finest whiskey in the world in Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible. This year's Handy was distilled in the spring of 2014, aged in warehouses K, M, and N, and weighs in at 129 proof. The flavor profile includes cinnamon, anise, and honey. People will, will, will probably have approached this differently, maybe doing the bourbons first and then the then rise, the, or the rise mm -hmm. first and then the bur probably the bourbons and then the rise. We decided to go in proof. Did, is there a wrong is way to do it? Is there a wrong way to drink five B tax in a night? <laughs> Someone is saying yes, there yes. is, and you did it wrong. <laughs> the color on this is so pretty. It's kind of got like a mahogany note to it or something. Ooh. I don't know. I like it. Okay, yeah, back to oh, rye, back yeah. to rye for sure, yeah, and 129. 
I see that anise note um, yeah. that they gave. Yeah, this is fall spices. Ooh, sharp pepper. That's kind of what I get. A little clove, but sharp pepper. But almost like there's like a frosting note in there too, like a creaminess on the nose. Oh uh, yeah, a little buttercream. Yeah. A little buttercream frosting. I'm hungry. Oh. <laughs> if you can't tell. Whoa. Ho, ho, whoa. Ho, ho, whoa. <sighs> well, that tastes like a high rye. Rye. That is very high rye. Super floral. Super spicy. Comes off as a high rye rye. That lit me up. Very Christmas, right? <laughs> very, yeah, very, very hol hol like this with autumn all spices. Spice, yeah. Yes, very mm. holiday. Campfire, foliage, mm. <laughs> all of it. I want a sweater. <laughs> okay. I want a stick with a marshmallow on it. Mm. Right there. It Hug. sits, yeah. It sits. It sits. It's, it is a sweater. It's your bourbon coat. It's a, yeah, well, this is a, coat. a rye coat. Second sip. Mm. Wow. Cinnamony, peppery, little sweetness in there, which is nice. And a little savory. I think that's the pet, like it's coming from the pepper side of things. Yeah. It's a, it's a, <sighs> a it's a seasoning on a steak. You know, I was going to go. I knew you were going to go steak. steak. Yes. I knew. Let's be honest. But it's, it's a, it's a crunchy seasoning on a steak. Mm. I, I wouldn't say this is like, I would choose this one or that one. It's like, if I'm having a nice light evening drink. Sure. Uh, maybe towards the late summer, I would pick the Sazerac. If I'm, if it's like November and I'm freezing and we're sitting outside around a campfire, I'm gonna pick this. Right. There's a cause for each of these, which I like that Absolutely. they differentiate. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna have one more, like one more tiny sip. You know the mouthfeel oh. on this too is so exceptional mouthfeel. I can't believe you did that. Um, we're only halfway through. Well, there might be more than one exceptional mouthfeel. Okay, we are three of five in. This is a perfect time to Half time. for us to take a little break uh, because we have now stepped up to the big boy league proof wise. So yes. we are going to take a little break, but it's a perfect time to tell you guys about our home on the internet is whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the Glen Cairns that we're drinking from, the water glasses that we're drinking from, the shirts that we're both wearing. That we're not uh, drinking from. That we're not drinking from. We might spill on us later and have to drink from it. Who knows? Um, rocks glasses, challenge coins, and more. Always coming soon. That's whiskeyambitions.com. You can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month uh, and be friends with us. Yeah, we do a patron only podcast after the episode exclusives called Another Round with Chad and Sarah. We do, you know, first crack at merch and we do polls. We ask you guys what you want to see next. So kind of like our little brain trust right there. Yeah. So go there. Join. All right. See you guys in a minute. Okay, we're back. We're ready to keep chugging along. I'm so ready for these next two, Chad, because I have to say they've made it into our, our yeah, they've made it into our best of list several times, and so I'm really excited about yeah. that. This is George T. Stagg. The proverbial powerhouse favorite of the antique collection, George T. Stagg, comes in at 130.4 proof this year. Last year's release was awarded 97 points in the 2020 Ultimate Spirits Collection, and fans will find the similar Stagg taste profile they know and love with cinnamon, caramel, and cherries on the nose, and a creamy vanilla with lightly smoked oak on the palate. The finish is black coffee, dark cherries, and herbs. This year's release contains bourbon from barrels filled in the spring of 2005. Storage location of these barrels varied across warehouses L, K, and Q. The evaporation loss of this year's batch was 59%, a bit higher than the last few year's releases. George T. Stag, not Stag Jr. Although, no. Stag Jr. past Stag Jr. couple holds years its own. has blind. It really does do well. Holy <sighs> smokes. Yeah. And smokes. <laughs> 130.4 proof of uncut, unfiltered. Smoke oak caramel. Bourbon goodness. Smoke oak caramel. Smoke oak caramel. Again, cherry, that's kind of been like a through line, I feel like for us uh, on the nose. <sighs> Just those three things is what I'm Little great. feeling. Okay, so I was like, I, I was like, I might get on board with the cherry that you said, but I don't know if that's quite it. And I feel more comfortable with grape. With grape. All right. Shall we? We shall. Ooh, can't hold it on your tongue too long. Give us a moment. <laughs> oh, goodness wow. gracious. And I get a little grape mm. on the palate. It is, it does have some grapiness to it. This is one like after I take a sip and I'm letting it like linger, my mouth is just watering. <laughs> yeah, it's very savory. It's so savory and rich. 
and oily. Buttery. And I don't mean to oversell this one, but I'm gonna give you my honest opinion and it's that I love it. It has an exceptional mouth feel and it kind of went a little apple peel there mm. after kind of kind of that grape was there. It went a little apple. I think that's sort of like the... the, the I can give you like oak, an apple pie. Apple pie, like the smoke. There's like a, a cooked element to it. And I think that's the char mm. from the barrel. Long, 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 long hug. This is a sexy pour. <laughs> it has a syrupy quality to it. I think that's that like oily... Very thick, yes. Yeah, caramel, brown sugar. The unfiltered notes. nature of yeah. it. The non-chill oh, filter. It's so good. And my, the tip of my tongue is tingling. My, all over my tongue. All is, over. Is tingling. The cadence of the flavors like unrolling through the whole experience is, is it doesn't feel like mm, uh, mm -hmm. jarring. It's, it's not a roller coaster. It's not, it's real smooth, like real even, I guess. Yeah. Not smooth. I wouldn't call this smooth. I don't, again, we've talked about this before. I don't really like the description smooth because I think that implies that it's super soft and mellow, which this is not. But I do think it's even keeled mm -hmm. throughout. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It's not jarring. It doesn't jut out in any weird, crazy way. Everything seems very methodical and planned. The way it rolls out, and I think that's what a really exceptional whiskey mm. is meant to do. It's the classic bourbon flavors, but just in a more <laughs> exceptional presentation. You yeah. know, this is uh, you know anyone can can cook a steak, but you go to a Michelin five star restaurant and they present a steak in a way that blows your hair back yeah, and that's sure. kind of the same thing with limited edition uh, rollouts like this where they save the best of the best right. put out there and I feel like this George T. Stagg is representing that. This one is filling it it's it's full you know mm -hmm. it, <laughs> it's very like luxurious it fills you up it it, it, it embodies you I think I think I'm that, good. That's I think enough. I'm good, honestly. I really want to save this. Yeah, though. we're gonna we're gonna move on. And now we have William Lavery Weller, hmm. which again, uncut, unfiltered, yeah. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, one thirty four point five proof. The Antique Collections uncut unfiltered weeded recipe bourbon is William LaRue Weller. Previous editions of this weeder have won many accolades, including the 2019 release receiving a gold medal at the Los Angeles International Spirits Competition, and also named second finest whiskey in the world in the esteemed Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible. The 2020 release was distilled in the winter of 2008 and aged in warehouses I and C. This bourbon registers at 134.5 proof. Flavors of soft caramel chew, spearmint, and cinnamon can be found on the palate in this year's offering. Did we save the best for last? We'll see. Not a lot jumping out. I mean, I know it's there. I think it might just be one of those situations where I gotta take a sip first it's before the nose really pops. I get a little foliage a going vanilla on. clove type of... I was gonna say cloves. Yeah. Okay, so I was gonna say cloves, but then I was like, am I just wrong on that? Because it's weeder, you know? I Pine think... cone, maybe? Hmm. Uh, foliage, that's what Foliage. I... Yeah. And dark brown sugar, but yes. really faint. All right, All let's right. just dive let's in. Let's do it. Oh. 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 There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot happening. <sighs> that finish is nice. I'm just experiencing, sorry, for the blank face. You get a little misty eyed. <laughs> oh, he really likes it. It's it's a lot coming at you. Talk about the most exceptional of mouthfeels. I feel like just from the first I sip think, even is this one. I think this wins mouthfeel award. Yeah. Of the lineup. No doubt. Very that warming. Is lovely. And, and savory and drinks like a meal. The finish on this, it just keeps going. I love this proof, but yeah. like this is one where I could have one. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's so. You don't want to waste. You don't want to waste it. And it's also so much like it's oh. meant to be appreciated and that I couldn't have, I don't know if I could have more than one. And also I mean, the hot. It's hot. It's hot. At this point, this might be a little bit of a cop out, but it is savory like a steak. It is just, it it, it brings. I feel like I've heard that before recently. <laughs> it brings to mind the image of a very juicy, medium rare steak, cooked to perfection, let's get that right. It's a little hard to describe. It is hard to describe. This one for me is less of a steak and more of start to finish you, the experience of going out to like an amazing restaurant with incredible ambiance, 
and having, I mean, my mouth is still watering. So it's a five course. Is this is a <laughs> beautiful, like the best five course meal that you've had. I don't know, makes you feel good inside and you finish that meal and you've had wine or whiskey or whatever in good company and you're mm. just like, this was a night. Yes. This was like one of my favorite nights. And that is a taste, that is a flavor I can't pinpoint, <laughs> but it is a feeling. Like that, just that good feeling. I don't know. There's been other whiskeys that we've rattled off, you know, so many things that we've unpacked from it. And this one, it, it's that, a lot harder. It's like I'm saying, it's like, yeah. it's hard for me to pin down one flavor, but I can give you the, ex the feelings that it's giving me. Yeah. When I go back to the nose on this one, I still get the brown sugar. I also get like berries and cream and sugar dusting. It's nice. And every time I come back, I'm getting something else. Yeah. That is what I love about these though, the stag and especially this one. And I feel like I felt this way last year too, was that every time, you know, there's just something else to uncover with yeah. it, which is I think what, what makes it worth the, pr the price and the hunt is that it is an experience and you do get, it's interesting. It's like a conversation between yeah. you and the whiskey. You come back and there's something different to explore. I'm getting warm honey <laughs> and that might be more of a feeling than I think it's like, a tasting note. Yeah, the feeling of drinking like a warm, the most perfect hot toddy on a cold day yeah. of like, it just, the really honey and yes, the, the, mm. the, I think that's the mouthfeel coming through. I mean, it's not dissimilar to the George C. Stag, even though they are different mash bills. They're, and they're, they taste, you know, the, the profile's different, but the feeling that they give me. Mm -hmm. But this one is, I feel a step up. Woo 10 out of 10 would buy again. Can <laughs> yes. we turn it up to 11? I don't yes, know. Yes, this goes to 11. Is there any one that you feel is not worth $100 no. MSRP? No, I mean, even with the Sazerac 1890 proof, we said it was the appropriate price. Now, the problem is, is people usually don't see these at the appropriate MSRP Which is not in our price. control. And, and nothing that we can, you know, Say recommend off because those are gonna vary widely. But yes, I would give the thumbs up to all five of these. Like if you, have the opportunity in a lottery to get any one of these and the one that you didn't get goes before you like take any one of them they're all really oh, great they're all stand up offerings yeah but that's up to you if you are having a pour at a bar and you have the choice between all five my recommendation if they're the same price my recommendation is this okay yeah. but if you don't like high proof Right. Then my recommendation might be the Eagle Rare. Uh, that's actually what I would say too. If you don't like super high proof, so. Yeah. Um, okay, so how do you think we should go about choosing a favorite? Since we're already in the bourbon mindset, let's bring the stag back and, and just do a quick little A-B test. Okay. Okay, since we just had the Weller, going Let's back go to the stag. stag. Oh, such a different the oak flavor presence profile. Yeah. comes through mm -hmm. so much more. Not as oily, buttery, mm -hmm. beautiful. You know, it's got that stag kind of kick. It does have that it's, kick. It's what we love about the the, the junior, which mm -hmm. we're a lot more familiar with. Yeah. Let's be honest. Um, but here's the Weller. Yeah. It's... I know my answer. <laughs> uh, they're both wonderful, but it's it's the William Weller. It's the Weller. Yeah. It just has. It's just more. It's just m more. elevated. Uh, it's, it's just. It's it's sophisticated. It's yes. well traveled. Yes. I don't know <laughs> yes. how to describe it. It's. It got its PhD while the stag just graduated with a B. No. S. Let's do the two rise. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna start lower. Start proof. low proof. Oh, that's way more floral and fruity. So fruity. You nailed that on the first pass. Hey, cool. Really good stuff. Mm-hmm. Very pine, you know. It is pine. Very pine. I think you said that too. Mm -hmm. Wow, he was really good. Hey. And then turned up spearmint. More spearmint Super. though. Super. Super spearmint. And all the spices. I don't know that this is fair comparison. I could, I could go with that 90 proof now. Me too. I feel I'm like- I'm kind of like if, sorry. I'm kind of feeling like if I, I, I want the punch, now that I've had the stag and the William Lou Reller, I want that type of punch, not the rye punch. Right. You know? Yeah. I might go Sazerac. I think for me, and I agree with you, um, I feel like the handy is coming in like very specialty, uh, like I said, holiday. We'll call it Q4. Um, okay. <laughs> October, November, December, holiday, cold weather. Like that is where this is falling for me, which mm. is great because that's when it comes out. So you should enjoy it then. Yeah. Whereas I think this Sazerac is more of a year round. Uh, we'll call it evergreen. You could drink it any time of the year and it would be great. Yeah. 
And that- I, They're both great. This is matchup is gonna come down to your mood. Yes, but man, this just became a lot better it's in my so book. It's so lovely. A lot better. When we started out with this one, I was like, all right, well, come on, let's get to the end. New respect for the, new respect for the Sazerac 18. All right, the only one left to do is revisit the Eagle Rare. Okay, I guess we can do that. Okay. ER-17. We don't want to leave out the Eagle Rare. Oh. Nose has gotten better. It has. It's opened up definitely more chocolate, uh, toffee, brown uh -huh, sugar uh -huh. notes. All what she said. Yeah. Tasty. Good stuff. Yeah. Tasty stuff. Love I think that you proof. The ma maturity is coming through also, and like the finish up with the oak. I just think like we're, we're not the right people for this to be like, Again, we already knew when we were looking at the stag and the William Lee Weller that this would come in third to it. And that is a proof thing. And that is admittedly because we gravitate towards those higher proofs now. Yeah. But if you are more of a bottled and bond kind of person, then this is probably up your alley. Mm -hmm. The best part of this is it's finish. That's when it goes mm. into the age. Yeah, such a little bit of leather mm. and tobacco. The oak is always there, um, but it just goes darker on the finish and it, they really play nicely together, those three, three flavors. You're completely nailing it on those finished notes, those three playing together. And I think you may have said cherry before on this. Yeah. And I think it's also, it's like a cherry tobacco leather oak. Cherry cordial, like a chocolate cherry mm. type of It's really nice. Type of thing. I uh -huh. have to say, this is one of my most favorite things that we've done. Probably because I feel like a <laughs> spoiled little shit. Shocker. <laughs> now, super lucky. Um, you know, thanks to Buffalo Trace for sending us uh, like press a, samples. I feel like it was Christmas when we opened this box. Completely. And you know, this is Bourbon Heritage Month when we're filming this. It is LE season, it's hunting season. Not that there's never not hunting season. But so. it is officially hunting season. That's why I wanted to put that out. Well, this was uh, just a dream come true. Um, really, really good. Um, but that is where we're gonna have to leave it. You were feeling pretty good. Yes. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to us already and would like to do so, we'd love to have you. You can click right up here to do that. There's also suggestions of other videos right down here. We hope to see you over there in those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more bourbon.